بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين أما بعد We talked about the story of the cow which where the surah, surah al-Baqarah is taking its name after the story of the cow just to recap it quickly, because the ayat are connected. The ayat are connected, so just to recap quickly on the story. This young man who was hoping to inherit his uncle, who did not have any children, wanted to basically hasten the process of the inheritance. So he killed his uncle, took the body, placed it in front of the door of another person, hoping to capitalize on both. Given the fidya, the ransom for somebody else killing a member of your family, God forbid, and then getting the inheritance from his uncle, and then trying to push away any doubts about him that he may have killed his uncle. So an issue aroused as a, out of this, and then the Israelites went to Musa السلام, and they said, we have a problem, a fight is about to break out between the tribes because of the murder of this person. So Musa alayhi salam commanded them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa alayhi salam to tell the Israelites to slaughter a cow, and then they began to ask about the characteristics and the traits and the physical description of the cow, and they began to do so out of lack of willingness to submit to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do. They could have slaughtered any cow, and that would have done the trick. But because of their stubbornness and their defiance and their lack of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they began to ask one question after the other and as a result they ended up with one cow that fits the characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrated for them in three ayat and this cow happened to be owned by an orphan who his father left for him and then as a result he asked for a very steep price and at the end, they ended up paying the weight of the cow in gold. And this cow, in real market value, was worth only three dinars or three dirhams. So you can see how when one continues to ask, you know, when the tashri'a, when the legislation descends, that this is only a way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tighten the rules and regulations and the sharia over this individual billah. Now, if you can put yourself in this scenario, they found the cow, they're ready to slaughter it, Musa alayhi salam is among them, there's a huge crowd of people witnessing this. The body of the dead person who has been murdered is lying down. And then they begin to slaughter the cow. They slaughter the cow, the cow is now dead. So you have two dead bodies, the body of the cow and the body of the individual who was killed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقُلْنَا ضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Take parts of this cow and strike the disease with it. And this is from the majesty and the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is able to transfer his power to bring back and res resurrect the dead to another person or to another individual. So here they take part of this cow, a dead body, striking a dead body, the deceased or the person who has been murdered comes back to life. This is all being witnessed by huge crowds of people. The murderer, the culprit, is there. So the person rises and he says, Ibn Akhi qatalani. The son of my brother killed me. And then right back, dead. What do you think the reaction of the son of his brother? You think that this is a moment for him to revisit his actions, to repent, to break down crying, to do something to show an act of regret. The immediate denial came. He said, no, I did not do it. I did not do it. Imagine this is not a person who's been witnessed by a witness who could have mistaken the identity, could have said, well, maybe it's a look alike, it was dark at night, this is, no. This is the deceased. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a miracle is taking place in front of one of the mighty prophets, in front of a huge crowd, and this person is still denying. Not only this person, other people join him. Many from the Israelites join him. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following ayah says what? 
ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة. After you've seen everything, the bounties, the miracles, the punishment, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused you to be dead and then resurrected you, all of that, then your hearts hardened. Hardened, hardened in this context means your hearts have died. Your hearts are dead. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares these dead hearts with the rocks. فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ it is like rocks. Aw here means wa, according to the interpreters of the Quran. Aw means wa, means that and. Meaning that it's like the rocks and even harder. It's like the rocks and even harder. And this is something we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our hearts may harden. At the time of the Prophet, وسلم, when the Sahaba began to achieve one victory after another, and they were very poor. So they began to you know, reap some of the spoils of war. So in other words, they began to become more materially wealthy. They have more material possessions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended. This did not stop the ibadah. They did not stop their iman or any of that. They simply lessened a little bit. In the Arabic language it's called futur. It means that they are, were not as enthusiastic and as hasty you know, in, in, in the positive sense of the word, of rendering their ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ is it a time for the believers that their hearts achieve khushu'a? And takhsha'a qulubuhum. Khushu'a, by definition, it means fear. Fear that is accompanied by glorification. It means that you are freeing an entity that is so great, that is so supreme, that is so glorious. Not fearing a beast or fearing danger or any of that, no. Fearing an entity that is so great, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, upon knowledge. So it's fear, glorification, that is based upon knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the definition of khashiyah. The definition of khushu'a. لذكر الله to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وما نزل من الحق that has been revealed from the truth meaning that the Quran أو وما نزل من الحق from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is الحق who is الحق ولا يكونوا كالذين أوتوا الكتاب and they do not become like those who were given the prior revelation فقست قلوبهم and this is the situation of the Israelites that their hearts have become so hard that they were dead and one ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف غُلْف means that it's sealed. The guidance is not penetrating. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed them, has expelled them from His mercy because of their disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of their disbelief in their prophets. Because of their disbelief in the ayat and the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended upon them. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following ayah, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ After all that you've seen, your hearts have become so hard, it is like rocks, أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةً Indeed, it's even harsher than the rocks, and harder than the rocks. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in these rocks, there is good. SubhanAllah, in these rocks that we see, there is good. In their hearts, there is no good. It is that. فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ And if from these rocks, rivers will explode. Rivers will come about. Rivers will be born. Just like they've seen during their travel with Musa alayhi salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them rocks from which water comes out, which is the source of life. You know, the support for every little thing, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And we have made from water every living thing. So there is no living thing on the face of the earth 
except that it needs water and it has water in it. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَا And from these rocks, rivers will explode. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَا From these rocks, some will split. And one of the geologists was doing a test on these rocks. And subhanAllah, he said, when these rocks are in a state of khashia and khushu'a from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they begin to pull tight. And as a result, water from in between and from around begins to emerge. Begins to emerge. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّهُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءُ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Some of these rocks would actually come tumbling down from the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these rocks actually have intellects. They understand. Is their understanding like ours? Of course not. Of course not. But they come in a state of khushu' in a state of khashya, and they come tumbling down, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time you see a rock, if you happen to witness a rock, or you hear about it, or so on and so forth, you see it coming tumbling down from the mountains, it is come, it's tumbling down from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you see rivers explode, this is one of the interpretations of the scholars, of the Mufassiri of the Quran, every time you see rivers explode, or water emerges from between rocks, Know that this is from the khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِ That everything is in constant state of tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And the khashya means, as we said, fear that is accompanied by glorification of the entity that you fear. And in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is based upon knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke with the mountains when he said, لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله إذا خشية is fear that is accompanied by glorification that is based upon knowledge ها خشية it means الخضوع والسكون والتذلل لله is that one is in a state of humility to Allah سبحانه وتعالى in a state of humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time in a state of submission as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on judgment day وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ فَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَّا هَمْسَى وَخَشَعَتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ means that all the voices are in a state of humility to our Rahman, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are in a state of fear of Him are in a state of submission to Him فَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَّا هَمْسَى that you do not hear but whispers but whispers. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر استغفره. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت. وعافنا في من عافيت. وتولنا في من توليت. وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت. وقنا وصرف عنا اللهم برحمتك شر ما قضيت. فإنك إلهنا ومولانا تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك. إنه لا يعز من عاديت ولا يذل من واليت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت سبحانك اللهم بحمدك عدد خلقك ورضا نفسك وزينة عرشك ومدار كلماتك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته